Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. The long and rich history of Japan is full of tales about fierce male warriors who have accomplished amazing feats during great battles and violent wars. But other than from, I don't know, Kenshin, we've heard very little of what the women have done while those great male samurais bravely wielded their weapons on the deadly battlefield. The thing is, the scarcity of information on the achievements of women who lived in the feudal society of Japan is not all that surprising. Because of course, back then, the females were regarded as the lesser sex in our consideration individuals of significantly lesser importance than the guys. Also, in feudal Japan, women had very little freedom and were unable to decide what role they wanted to play in society. And their fates were dependent heavily on their social class and the will of their elders and their husbands. But despite all these obvious challenges they faced as essentially second-class citizens, there were many women who did take up arms to become fearless warriors themselves. And they were known as the Onabugeisha. The Onabugeisha were skilled female warriors who belonged to the Japanese nobility. For the most part, they were responsible for managing the household, which included tending to the children, the crops, and supervising the servants and the household's day-to-day -day operations. However, just like the men of the samurai class in feudal Japan, they were trained how to fight and use weapons so that they could protect the family and ensure the survival of the clan's remaining members at times of war. And because of their strong sense of duty and loyalty, it was also up to them to preserve the honor of the clan and to seek revenge if needed in memory of murdered relatives. Now, centuries before the samurai class was established, Japanese warriors had already been training to fight using a sword and spear. Women in particular used the naginata, which became the preferred weapon of the Unabugeisha between the 12th and 19th centuries. The naginata is essentially a long-pulled sword that is much lighter compared to the katana and also very versatile, which made it a suitable defensive weapon that women kept inside their homes. Another preferred weapon of the female samurai is the kaiken, a double-edged dagger that was best used in close combat and in instances where movement is limited. It was also the weapon of choice in their act of ritual suicide. And Unabugeisha was also trained from a very young age in the Japanese knife fighting system known as Tentojutsu, a traditional martial arts that is still being taught today. So equipped with a lethal set of skills, the Unabugeisha were trained professionals that were just as capable as the male warriors and samurais of that period in Japan's history. Now, even though women were not required to join armies and fight in battles as doing so was perceived as exclusively only to the men, history has taken note of several women warriors who successfully made a name for themselves for fearlessly fighting alongside their male counterparts in many wars. In fact, some of the Unabugeisha did not just engage the enemies on the battlefield, they also led their own armies and came up with their own military strategies. One such woman was the legendary Empress Jingu, and although her existence is still widely disputed, it is believed that she lived sometime between 169 and 269 AD. According to the legend, she was the wife of the 14th emperor of Japan and had to assume regency when her son ascended the throne. During her rule, she led an attempt to invade Korea in 200 AD and supposedly succeeded in doing so without shedding a single drop of blood. Another notable female warrior recognized as part of the Onabugeisha is a woman named Tomoe Gozen. Her achievements were mentioned in a 13th century epic Haiki Monogatari, which chronicled the power struggle between the Taira and Minamoto clans during the Genpei War in the 12th century. Tomoe was a loyal servant of Minamoto no Yoshinaka, who at the time was fending off forces of Minamoto no Yoritomo. The tale of Haiki described her as Yoshinaka's first captain, whose skills as an archer, a swordswoman, and a horse rider were equivalent to that of a thousand warriors. One of her iconic duels purportedly took place during the Battle of Awazu in 1184. In this battle, Tomoe charged toward enemy forces and faced off against her best fighter. And in a fight to the death, this Bugeisha managed to unhorse the masterful samurai and and decapitate him. Her achievements in battle were so great that she became the subject of numerous plays and paintings. Another Unabugeisha worth noting is Hangaku Gozen, believed to have lived during the Heian and Kamakura periods of feudal Japan. The Lady Hangaku was the daughter of a warrior family that was loyal to the Taira clan. She joined the attempt to overthrow the Kamakura shogunate during the Kinan uprising and led 3,000 men to defend the Torisakayama fort against a charging army of warriors that was 10,000 strong. Unfortunately, after fighting valiantly, the defense of Lady Hangaku's army fell. She also got injured by an arrow and was captured and brought before the Shogun. However, her skills and viciousness during the battle did not go unnoticed as she caught the eye of several warriors who wanted to marry her. And so, instead of sentencing her to death, the Shogun gave one of his soldiers the permission to marry Lady Hangaku. The couple eventually ended up having a daughter and their family lived out the rest of their lives in peace. Anyway, the Tokugawa period from the 17th to the 19th century 
brought relative stability and peace to the country. However, it was also during this time that Neo-Confucian philosophy largely influenced society. And this led to the degradation of women's role in society as really nothing more than child bearers, which consequently diminished the status of Una Bugeisha as well. Nevertheless, women still trained in martial arts and when a war erupted between the Tokugawa shogunate and the imperial courts, women were once again part of the conflict as the defenders of their households and as warriors on the battlefield. And one of them was Nakano Takiku who led a special female corps that fought against the Imperial Japanese Army during the Battle of Aizu in 1868. Takiku was a master martial artist and was highly skillful in wielding the Naginata. And during the battle, Takiku managed to eliminate several male samurai warriors by fighting them in close combat. Unfortunately, the Imperial forces had a out gun and she ended up getting shot in the heart. But this girl was so tough that even in her dying breath, she refused to succumb to the injuries inflicted by the enemy or have her body be taken as a trophy. Instead, she asked her sister Nakano Yoku to decapitate her. Her head was then buried under a pine tree at Hokai Temple, which is situated today in Fukushima. A monument was later erected next to her grave, and she and her fellow women fighters are still commemorated today by young girls at the annual Aizu Autumn Festival. Of course, with the fall of the Takugawa Shogunate and the start of the Meiji Restoration in 1868, the centuries-long era of the samurai met its inevitable conclusion. This also meant the end for the Onabu Geisha. Nevertheless, the bravery and legacy of these amazing female warriors are still remembered and honored to this day. I love talking about the roles women played in history, especially about them fitting into roles that traditionally we think were only exclusive to men. So in the next video, we're gonna actually talk about a martial arts clan in China that, that is all women. The thing is, throughout history in most parts of the world, most women were treated as second-class citizens. They weren't really allowed to do what they wanted to do. They were mostly seen as weak and not as good as men in certain things like, like fighting and becoming a warrior. But hey, don't look down on women. They're, they are ferocious fighters. I mean, if you don't believe me, just, just look at this girl here. Yeah. I, I love watching that clip. That's like my dream girl right there. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoy this video. Thanks so much for watching. See you later.